All right, Emily, first of all, I do have to say I, I'm admiring your, your choice of um, jacket color today. <laughs> Great minds think alike. It's so awesome to sit down with you. Uh, obviously, just having the female influence leading uh, a company that's sponsoring one of the race teams that, that we spend so much time around. How did you first kind of get involved or, or hear about NASCAR? Well, my real introduction to NASCAR was through our sponsorship with RCR and our sponsorship of, of NASCAR. There's so much energy and electricity around the sport. Um, the fan base is outstanding. And as a company who's looking for a business partnership, we have yet to find a partner better than RCR. Richard Childress Racing is, is one of the teams, three of their sponsors uh, are led by female CEOs. I actually wasn't aware of that. Um, and it, it doesn't surprise me. Obviously, it's something I'm very proud of. Uh, Richard Childress is a phenomenal individual, the most generous and genuine person I've probably ever met. Um, and the entire RCR company is a reflection of, of Richard and his values. How much did you know about NASCAR? When nothing, you, nothing. Nothing. So they come to you and they say, hey, yeah. we're thinking about getting into NASCAR, and you say what? Well, so when I joined um, Growth Energy, we were already part of, of the sport, but I was brought in as a change agent. Uh, I represent uh, ethanol producers around the country, and so together with RCR, we are transforming how auto enthusiasts, how consumers, how NASCAR fans view ethanol. Um, and we showcase the performance benefits and the environmental benefits of this fuel in some of the toughest, most grueling driving conditions every week. This put us on the national stage. It gave us exposure to talk with consumers, to talk with elected officials. There are a lot of members of Congress who are big fans of the sport. What's their response when, when you start talking about, about race cars being a woman in a male-dominated sport? First of all, it's fun. I mean, to be able to talk about how this fuel is used to enhance the performance of the engines it makes it real. They're sports fans, they get in their cars and they drive around, so it actually makes it a very real, accessible conversation. So your first NASCAR experience was where? Iowa Speedway. Iowa. Uh, and that you know, was, I mean, the one. first is always near and dear to your heart. It was fun for me because I was a grand marshal, so I got to tell the drivers to start your engines. Drivers, start yeah. And for me, um, the most amazing thing that was really unexpected is the accessibility that you have with the drivers and their teams. That they would spend so much time with the fan base and with us, talking with us right up until they get in the car and they drive off is something that was really unexpected um, in the most wonderful way. I did see your Twitter profile. You have a picture of you, like I think you're sitting on the side of the car. Yes, right? so, I mean, my first people... driving experience. Oh, did you get to yeah. drive a car? I've gotten to do it twice. Of course, me and 30 guys, <laughs> I'll get in the cars. So I guess the big question is how fast did you go in the race car? I do know. <laughs> I'm afraid to give you the number. <laughs> Come all right. on. All right, all right, 152 miles. That's good. I was proud. And this was at Charlotte? This was at Charlotte. That's fast. It's My heart is beating. <laughs> You've got the helmet on. I. That experience gave me so much respect for what the drivers yeah. go through. It's incredibly grueling and the endurance. So my, my hat's off, my helmet's off yeah, there you go. To, to all the drivers in the sport. But it was fun and it was kind of some good bragging rights back at the office.